In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get that old retro film effect look like we see in Grindhouse films in After Effects without any third-party plugins. Hey there, my name is Cameron with Motion Science. And today I'm gonna to show you how to create an old retro film effect that we see in Grindhouse films from the 60s and 70s. It's a really awesome effect. It doesn't require any third-party plugins and it's easy to do. Let's jump in. So let's start by creating our types. We're gonna select the type tool and we're gonna type out Grindhouse. And of course you can type out anything you wanna put in here. But I'm just gonna use the word Grindhouse. I'm going to select a line, center, horizontally and vertically. And I'm gonna select a type phase called Hot Pursuit that I found searching the web for a Grindhouse typeface. And I'm also gonna increase the vertical scale of the typeface. Next thing we're gonna do is go down here to color correction and we're gonna select fill. And I'm gonna select this color here. It's kind of like a nice desaturated pink. Set a keyframe for the color at 112. We'll go back to the beginning of our timeline and we're gonna set another keyframe and we're gonna make our color uh, more of a red color. I noticed that if you look at uh, old 70s retro titles, whenever something, whenever type fades up from zero transparency, it always typically starts with a red tint to that typeface and then it kind of levels out to the color it is. So even if this typeface was white, if it was 100% white when it finished, uh, I would still start it at a red fill color. And we're gonna play around with the opacity keyframes and take the 0% opacity back to zero. So you can see now we're already getting something interesting, right? So we're fading from zero to 100%. We're fading from transparent to opaque and from red to pink. I'm gonna create a new null object and we're gonna set a expression on this null object, which is wiggle parentheses 24 comma one. 24 times per second, we're going to have an amplitude of one, uh, which means that this null is going to just kind of wiggle around the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and parent grindhouse type to the null. And you can see it's a very subtle effect, but there's a little bit of wiggle to our type now. It's got that old film shake to it. Let's add a second null and we'll parent our first null to the second null. And to this null, we're gonna add a wiggle expression as well. So wiggle parentheses and one time per second at an amplitude of seven. We're going to have this type move around screen. So this just creates some secondary motion that just makes it way more interesting to look at and more analog. Next thing we're gonna do is add a new solid and we are going to call this solid white dust. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And to this solid, we're going to apply the effect noise and grain, fractal noise. And we just have to adjust a few settings here. One being contrast, we're gonna bump contrast up to about 600. And brightness will also take down and brightness will take down to negative 260. And then we're going to alter option click on evolution and put in an expression here that is wiggle parentheses 24 times per second at a value of 10,000. We get what I will call white dust for our screen. So it's starting to get that kind of old film look to it now. Next thing we're gonna do is set this to a transfer mode of screen. So it's white dust sitting over the top of our typeface. So you can see it's starting to look pretty retro, pretty grindhouse like. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our white dust and we're gonna rename this black dust. And to make the dust black, all we have to do is change the brightness from negative 260 to a positive 260. So now we have black dust on white and we will change the transfer mode to multiply and you can see that black dust sitting over the top of the typeface there. If I turn it off and on, it's easier to see. And if we preview this, now we've got some nice white dust, some nice black dust, and it's really looking retro. So let's take this a step further. Let's add a new adjustment layer. We'll call this adjustment layer effects. And we'll go to blur and sharpen and we'll go down here to Gaussian blur. 
and we're going to crank up the blurriness to something like six. It'll depend on the size of your composition. We're going to go to stylize glow and we're going to crank up the radius to something like 175 and turn down the intensity to something like 0.3. So we have a nice soft glow on our type now. Again, let's take this one step further. Let's go to layer, new adjustment layer, and this one we'll call blur. And we'll go to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And we're going to open up the effect and alter option click on blur radius and type in wiggle parentheses, 24 times per second, a amplitude of 10. I'm also gonna bring the in and out point of this layer uh, much closer together so that only during this point in the timeline, we get a kind of frenzied focus effect, like the projector is losing focus and trying to maintain or regain its focus. Looking pretty dope. Now you could call it good at this point. I think it looks really awesome. Uh, or you could take it one step further. And to do that, we could add a new solid. And I found that I really liked this kind of desaturated blue color that I'm gonna dial in right here. When going for these retro looks, we wanna be really careful to stay away from saturated colors. So I can take this to the bottom and now we've got, instead of the type on black, which is typically where I would tend to go, we've got the type on a desaturated blue, which looks really nice. Looks very grindhouse, very 70s. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that layer, turn it back off. So that's one approach you can go. Another way you could take this even further is we can take the type layer and we can go to create create shapes from text. What this does is it turns off our type layer. It creates shape layers inside of After Effects with our type. So what I'm gonna do is create a new group. I'm gonna select all of the different letters of the word, drop them into one group. And to that group, I'm going to apply a repeater. Now the default for a repeater is always to offset the position of X by 100. We're gonna change that to one and we're gonna change the position to one as well and we're going to set the number of copies uh, to something like 20. We're also going to take this shape layer and we are going to adjust the fill color to make it darker. So we'll make it kind of a deep red. We'll turn our text layer back on, which is sitting on top. So now when everything fades on, this text has this kind of faux 3D shadow to it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the number of copies to something like 16, so it's not quite as extruded. The more copies you have, the more extrusion will appear on screen. We're also gonna take that type layer one more time, create shape layers from type. And I'm doing this because I want to turn off the fill and turn off uh, the effect and turn on the stroke and the stroke, we're gonna make the same color as our extruded layer beneath. And this is just gonna make that type on top stand out a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this. And I'm really digging it. Go ahead and turn on that blue background layer and see how that looks. And either way, it looks great. Over black, over the desaturated blue, Maybe it's over an orange color. A lot of different ways you could go with the colors on this one. And that is super cool. That, my friends, is how you create a retro grindhouse film look. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style, and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron, and this is Motion Science.